I'm Tom Hardy and you're watching the Venom vlog. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today, we are going to actually look at a current Venom comic book because I know we've been trying to wrap up the Versus stuff and I will get to the final Versus episode. I'm just rereading the Giant Avengers Vault book right now. Uh, so we'll probably do that early next week. Uh, but for today, I want to talk about Venom number 16, which just hit shelves this past week. And before we get started on this, because uh, we're going to talk about spoilers, if you don't have a copy of this book and you want to read it, boom, there's a digital code. Go to that website, put in that code, and the first person who does it gets that comic book. They get a copy of this for free in digital format. Uh, so go ahead and do that. If you haven't uh, you know, checked out this book yet, then you can go read it, read the digital one, and then come back here and watch it afterwards. And if you don't want any spoilers, I also advise you to you know, step away, read the comic yourself, and come back. Because a lot of you were actually telling me that you felt this was one of the strongest issues of Donny Cates' run so far. And in some ways, I'll agree. You know, me, I'm, I'm Mr. Critical sometimes. Um, but with this run, I feel like... I agree that this is a really strong issue um, overall, uh, but there's still some things in it that I'm kind of like, uh, I want to kind of see where this is going. Uh, I'm going to first off say that this probably most likely takes place before the free comic book day issue. So, and that's sometimes a problem with free comic book day issues when they tease at something coming up like Absolute Carnage, uh, because obviously Absolute Carnage doesn't start till next month. So the storyline in that probably takes place right before Absolute Carnage, or could be the first few pages of Absolute Carnage, uh, you know, or something like that. So uh, we, well, I'm sure it's not that, but at least it's a teaser or precursor to that issue. So it's almost like a z issue zero, which would kind of make it take place after this. Because in this, at first I was like, wait a minute, Eddie Brock's going to try to get a job in this issue uh, to so, so he could get some soup for his son who was sick uh, his son who doesn't know that Eddie is his father uh, Dylan so you know Dylan doesn't know that Eddie's his dad yet and uh, even Eddie admits that he's too much of a coward to fess up to it right now and especially with everything going on war of realms and uh, the, all the carnage stuff and everything they've seen he's kind of like oh, I'll get there let's just have some father son time or let's hang out together uh, they're hanging out in Rex Strickland's you know like little bunker from issue two or three or whatever when it first appeared and uh, they're kind of hanging out there so they got supplies and guns but they don't have a lot of uh, food down there I, I would it's weird I would figure that, you know, Rex would have some MREs, but at the same time, it, Re it wasn't really Rex. He wasn't human. He was like a symbiote. So I guess that kind of makes sense why he, you know, they didn't have a lot of food down there. So anyway, Eddie is like, all right, my son has a fever. He's sick after everything we've gone through. He's probably just, you know, uh, just caught something like a cold or something. So I kind of like that because it's a very human thing that he has to do in this book. Uh, he's just like, all right, I got to go get soup uh, for my son. And that's it. And you have these like great panels. Um, actually, the art in this is not by Ryan Stegman because obviously he's going to be doing you know the main Venom book or the uh, Absolute Carnage book. Um, but uh, the art is by uh, well, it says Juan on the cover, Juan Gideon, and I think that's the case. Uh, yeah, Juan uh, Juan Gideon is the artist. Um, and uh, sorry, I was reading a bunch of books back to back, so I was like, wait, is that the, is that right? So yeah, so Juan uh, is filling in here for this issue, and he does a good job. Like these spreads are really great. I really love this one where it's like a summary of what Eddie Brock's been up to. In in case you you know got lost in the book or you haven't read it or you just kind of forgot or whatever um, and then they do this great two-page spread here and in this two-page spread there's actually two panels that go right here two captions that are missing apparently there was some kind of printing error I saw Donny Cates tweet about that um, so he actually tweeted the right image that is supposed to go here so I'll pop that up on screen there so you can see it and you'll see you know side by side or you well you won't see it side by side but in our version the one I have in my hands it is missing two panels or two captions right above where Thor is swinging his hammer uh, at Malekith like the the you know, dark symbiote version of Malekith. So, uh, and then now you can look at this version and you can see those are not there. So, uh, so yeah, so there you go. So, um, yeah, just some minor printing area, nothing, you know, these things happen. Um, but, uh, yeah, so the book is, that's basically what it is. It's, it's an exploration, kind of, of Eddie Brock. Uh, but he does it in a very Donny Cates kind of way, where anytime someone snaps back at Eddie or says something that he, that irks him on, like, a psychological level, he sees himself as Venom freaking out. So, like, when, um, you know, uh, Dylan is like, hey, do we have any super medicine? And, you know, the he imagined in his head that he's Venom. And he's like, no, we don't have any super medicine. You're turning me into a weak little, you know, and he cuts himself off. And it's basically like, you know, the dark side of Eddie Brock's mind, the dark side of any person's mind, but definitely Eddie Brock has a dark side for sure that snaps uh, and uh, really quickly. And it's something he's constantly working on trying to keep under control. And now without the suit, it's a little easier for him to get under control. He, You can see he's fighting with it. Like whenever that side of him comes out, he's like, no, that's not me. It's not, I'm not saying that right now. Uh, just shut it out, shut it out. And he's like, yes, you know, yes, Dylan, I'll go get you some soup. Just 
go go to bed, sleep for a little bit, and by the time you wake up, I'll be back with some soup. So he goes back to the Daily Globe, which I thought this was a neat little thing that they did, uh, to you know, just as part of the lore and stuff. He goes back and he talks to a guy named Clark, who used to be an intern. He was like a kid intern back in the days of the Sin Eater story. And you can even see the storyline is still framed on the wall, which I don't get. I feel like that would be a stain on the, you know, the newspaper's, you know, integrity because that story turned out to be a fake story. Um, you know, that wasn't Eddie Brock didn't actually expose the real Sin Eater, apparently. Um, so I don't know why that would still be framed up on the wall. Uh, who knows? I don't know. Whatever. Um, or maybe it's like set up there as a reminder of like that mistakes can happen and, and strive to not make those mistakes. Who knows? It doesn't really. Who cares really? But I just was like, ah, it feels weird that it's hung up there. But anyway, this Clark guy is in you know, charge now or he's at least he's able to hire, um, you know, freelancers and stuff to do assignments for them. So, uh, you know, and then, of course, he's telling Eddie, like, dude, I don't know if I can hire you. Eddie's wanting to snap. He wants to be Venom and snap at this guy. Uh, but, of course, he fights that urge. And he's like, all right, like, tell me what's going on. And he's like, the guy's like, look, you know, everyone knew you were Venom and everything. So you kind of, it's going to be really hard. He's like, look, I don't, I'm not Venom anymore. I don't have that part of me. I have a kid now. And I'm just trying to do right by him. Is there anything you can give me, any kind of freelance work, whatever it is? And so this Clark guy was like, look, you've always been nice to me when I was an intern here. And I'm glad you reached out. And I'm glad I still work here. And I can, I'm in a position where I can maybe help you out back since you were always nice to me. He goes, but, you know, I don't have much. He's like, but I'll tell you what. I have this, you know, after the War of the Realm stuff, there's a bunch of kids that went missing. And, you know, for all we know, they'll, they'll show back up. You know, the cops aren't really doing much, but you know how it is. If you pre if the press pressures the cops, the cops will get into doing more, you know, look into it more. So I want to write a story or have someone write a story about these missing kids, but I just can't, ha I don't have anyone to assign it to right now. So how about this? You go talk to some people in these neighborhoods where these kids went missing, see if you can come up with some answers. And if you come up with something and I can make a story out of it, uh, I'll pay you a few bucks and then I'll, I'll hire you for another freelance assignment later on when I have more work. So Eddie's like, yeah, okay, I can do that. And he's got, you know, like the symbiote hanging over his shoulder and stuff. But again, he doesn't really have the symbiote in him. These scenes where he's like, you know, kicking the door open, um, pretending like he's using super strength. He doesn't have any of that. It's actually just Eddie Brock. And, um, we talked about that before where, you know, sometimes Donnie Cates will write, like in the free comic play issue, to me it was clear that he was writing, um, you know, that it was Carnage disguised as Eddie Brock to frame Eddie Brock for some reason. And I know we talked about this because some of you guys like Swordsman and stuff were like, well, yeah, he needs to frame Eddie. So Eddie will, you know, everyone will be looking for Eddie and they'll hunt Eddie down for, you know, Carnage. And then he'll be, you know, Eddie will be forced to show himself and then Carnage can take, you know, take him. But it's like Carnage is constantly running into Eddie. Like even here, uh, the null, you know, power or whatever that's, you know, uh, you know, controlling everybody, controlling Carnage and, and making everyone work to a common goal they still got Eddie involved somehow, <laughs> you know, like Eddie still shows up. So at this point, like, it's like, all right, so, you know, Eddie's in New York. So it's just weird to me to, it seems counterintuitive to the ultimate goal, which is Noel wants to take over the earth and Carnage wants to turn all everyone into a puppet of Noel in a way. So if those are the basic plans, Frame and Eddie doesn't really serve that at all because it's, I don't, you see what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't make sense to frame Eddie for something where it gets everyone going after him when everyone going after him is still just going to be a possessed person by uh, Carnage and Null anyway, uh, or when their end goal is just to wipe out the whole world. So what's the point of having anyone hate Eddie or f frame him for murder when really you're just going to take over the whole planet? Like, it, it seems, just seems counterintuitive to the actual goal that Nolan, you know, and Carnage have, even though we don't really fully know what their goals are, but I'm going to guess world domination. I'm going to guess killing everybody at some point. I'm sure they're not going to want to live peacefully with, you know, non-symbiote people. So yeah. So again, so it just seems weird to me, uh, but you guys have explanations for why you are digging it. So uh, if you do, let me know down below of, of the why, you know, explain to me why you're liking that so much. Cause that's the one obstacle I have trouble getting over sometimes. Um, but that doesn't affect this book. This book is still strong. And and I totally get, obviously, he's not in the suit. He's just kicking the door in. Uh, Eddie Brock is just strong at this point. He's, you know, he's uh, tough. He's a tough dude. He's been through a lot. And uh, he's also fighting for his son. So he wants to get to the bottom of this. And so when he kicks in the door, he finds a bunch of, you know, homeless people that have been taken over by the null, you know, carnage thing. And they're all speaking in the null carnage voice. And, uh, and Eddie Brock gets into this big battle with them. And I feel like they really, I would have liked this scene to just been drawn as Eddie Brock fighting all these guys. I can understand maybe the artist, you know, they're like, hey, it's a Venom book. We want to draw Venom fighting. Um, and plus they made it clear that it's not really Venom. It's just Eddie Brock. But if you're telling an Eddie Brock story, 
I kind of want to see Eddie Brock do things. So that's like one of my little like narrative gripes is like, I get it. You want to show that he's fighting off like a demon side to him, but he's not really anymore. Uh, you know, this is Eddie Brock, the, the dark in him that's saying like, you know, shut this person up or kill them or you're making me weak or whatever. It's like, that's Eddie Brock. That's not really the suit or remnants of the suit doing that. That's Eddie's, you know, imagination. And so right now it looks, but I guess maybe that's why Eddie puts this, this makes it feel like he's in the suit because the suit betrayed him. And now he sees the suit as the bad part of him or something. I mean, it could, you can explain it a bunch of different ways, but for me, I just, as like an, a reader and an artist, you know, like I would have liked to see an Eddie Brock actually fight. And you actually see Eddie Brock fight for his life because you're not really afraid of Venom here when he's like fighting, even though you know he's not really Venom, you're reading these pages and it just takes away some of that tension. Uh, and it just, I don't know, I, I, but the art's great. Don't get me wrong, but it's just one of my little nitpicks. I don't know. You guys will probably disagree with me on that one. Uh, but for me, that I was like, oh, I would have just loved to see that to be Eddie. But this next part was all Eddie for the most part. Uh, this is where Eddie comes, he gets through the guys, like all those people he fought and beat up. And he's like, I recognize the voice. I know who's talking to me. And boom, you get Sin Eater, Emil Gregg. I thought this was awesome. And he's kind of like been resurrected. There's some kind of like null, you know, drawing on the ground. And he talks about how no brought him back and carnage brought him back and it's for a purpose and he wants they want eddie brock to have some blood on him uh before you know they take like they fight him and stuff before carnage fights him and so uh, so that's what he's doing he's basically there to be like hey i know you hate me i know i kind of ruined your life in a way so i'm gonna let you beat on me and i'm gonna give you all the answers you want because carnage and no want you to have those answers um but uh, i'm gonna let you beat on me and so that's when he again that's where i was like oh this is great just have eddie brock beat on Sin Eater. That would be a great visual thing and, and add some type of closure in a way to that kind of story in a visual sense because it's Eddie Brock versus Emil Gregg. Uh, but now they draw it as, you know, Venom again. So it's like, uh, like I get why, but I, I don't know if I fully agree with it because I just think it would have been more impactful a little bit if it was Eddie Brock since this is an Eddie Brock issue. Uh, but again, I can, you know, I, I can see why, all right, it's Eddie thinking it's the bad side of him and now he labels the bad side of him as the suit because the suit betrayed him or whatever. So I can get into the psychology of it but at the same time I'm like uh and I can understand the artist wanting to draw Venom too so working that into the story somehow and it makes sense that Eddie would project in a way um strength onto him as he's beating these guys up but from an emotional standpoint I'm kind of like oh I would have liked to just seen Eddie whipping the crap out of uh Emil Gregg here and so at the end when he he basically kills him bashes his brains in it again or whatever and kills him he does exactly what Carnage and Noel wanted him to do which was he wanted him to kill and so now Eddie Brock has blood on his hands, and that's what, I guess, for some reason they wanted that. They wanted him to give in to that side of him or something. I'm sure that we'll figure all that out in Absolute Carnage, because that's coming up very, you know, very soon, a couple weeks. Um, so then, yeah, after Eddie Brock does that, he goes and talks to Clark again. He says, hey, look, I appreciate the job offer. I can't take a job here. I'm, you know, clearly I'm not a normal person. Uh, so here's what I'm going to do. There's 13 kids downstairs in your lobby. I rescued them. When the cops show up, I cannot be here. So why don't you just give me any money you have in your wallet and that'll be enough so I can get my my kids some soup, I can get some medicine for them, and I can take care of us for like a couple days. Uh, can you just make that deal with me? And so Clark is like, yeah, sure. You know, and he gave him the money. So then the, the book ends with Eddie going back and he gives the soup to uh, Dylan. And Dylan, there's this kind of a great moment. Dylan goes, this soup sucks. <laughs> and Eddie kind of turns and you think he's going to have another one of those moments where it's like the soup coming out and screaming at his kid. You you know, you don't appreciate nothing, blah, 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 blah. blah. But Eddie doesn't. Eddie just kind of laughs and goes, yeah, you know what? It, it Maybe it does. It's cheap soup, but you know, things could be worse. And then, of course, as he's saying that, there's an image of, you know, Carnage out there um, probably on the hunt or beginning his hunt for Eddie. And then I would imagine that the free comic book day issue where, uh, you know, Carnage kills Lee Price um, at the raft or wherever they were at the prison or Rikers or something, I would imagine that takes place after this because then cause there's no way Eddie would have went into the Daily Globe and said, hey, I need a job if he was being framed for murder already. So, again, continuity-wise, I feel like the free comic book day issue comes after this. So that confused me for a second there because I was like, oh, didn't that happen? But I guess that makes sense that it would happen after this issue. So, yeah, overall, you guys were right. I thought this was fun. Uh, I love the cover. I think the cover is great with the Sunday that's, you know, Venom. Um, but uh, and the, <laughs> the rhino's in the background, even though the rhino's not in this issue. Uh, but I guess they didn't want to give away Sin Eater was because that would have been a cool thing to have Sin Eater back there or something. Um, but uh, yeah, overall, though, I thought it was a cool issue. Uh, you guys are right. Uh, one of the stronger issues of this run. Of course, I have a, a little nitpicks of it, but it didn't overall interrupt my enjoyment of this. Um, I thought this was a good issue. And I am getting a little bit more excited 
excited for Absolute Carnage. Like I said, mainly because the tie-ins. I feel like a lot of the tie-ins sound like really great ideas, and they have writers on them that I really like, and they have some really cool artists on them as well. Uh, but I'm still going to pick up Absolute Carnage, uh, and we'll talk about that. Every issue, it's all going to be brought to you guys essentially by House of Secrets in a way, because uh, I'm going to just label them as the sponsor for what I'm calling the Summer of Carnage. And uh, the Summer of Carnage is going to be basically every issue of Absolute Carnage, all the tie-ins. I'm going to review all of them, one you know episode or one issue at a time. And uh, and all of those issues or episodes of our show are going to be labeled as the Summer of Carnage. Uh, and so that's what we're going to dive into. Uh, we will do another Carnage week, but I'll probably push it closer to the fall, um, like November, December-ish. Uh, once the movie, the sequel starts rolling and they start filming that, we'll probably do another Carnage week around Christmas time. Um, and then uh, that might even be our last Carnage week, or maybe last one of two. We might have one more left after that because we got to get through like the Norman Osborn Goblin thing and the, the, the series, like the Carnage um, series. Or, or was Norman Osborn Red Goblin? I think that's what it was called. So we'll talk about that and all that later on uh, when we get into the Flash Thompson stuff because I'm also want to tie the minimum Carnage story into Flash Thompson as well. So uh, that won't be part of Carnage Week. But anyway, I'm, I'm like just rambling right now. Uh, we have a lot of stuff coming up, obviously, on this show. But for the foreseeable future, I'm going to wrap up the, the Vault storyline. And then throughout this month, I'm going to try to get through Tooth and Claw and all those other uh, Long Came a Spider and The Hunger and Hunted. I'm going to try to get through all those as fast as I can uh, before Absolute Carnage starts in early August. I might be like, uh, it'll be close, but I'll do my best. But once we get through those, then we're just going to focus on Absolute Carnage and any movie news that pops up um, from Comic-Con or anywhere else, like if there is any news for Venom or even Morbius, because I'll still cover some Morbius stuff. And I even have the first appearance of Morbius, so we might do an episode where we talk about his first appearance as well here on this show. So yes, and then the next episode what we're going to talk about is just some news that came out um, i picked up this issue weapon plus wolverine and captain america and i'll probably dive into this issue on a uh, old man seek episode probably like next week or so but there is something in the back here that ties into venom and something that happens in the book that ties to venom but luckily like bleeding cool or someone did a whole article on it so we will base you know the next episode we'll talk about that article we'll go through it and i'll show you exactly what i mean because it looks like wolverine uh, and venom and captain america are all kind of tied together in a way, which isn't a big surprise if you read Venom or the Ven uh, Venom or whatever, the Vietnam story of Venom. Uh, we did read that and review that a while ago, uh, but uh, that kind of set this up. So it looks like there was a top secret project called you know weapon one which was project rebirth and that's where captain america came from and then there's weapon x which is weapon 10 essentially uh, if you go by roman numerals and that was wolverine becoming you know logan becoming wolverine and getting the adamantium claws put in him but between there there was nine other weapons and some of them we've already known about in comics like duke i think he was like number seven or or six or something like that uh, but apparently weapon v was Venom, and it was a project by Nick Fury. So we're going to talk about that in the next episode of this show. So thank you so much for watching. Hit, you know, Let me know what you thought of this. To who got the free comic issue or free uh, digital code? If you did, let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the comic. And everyone else, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the comic. Whether you agree with me, disagree with me, I still thought this was a strong issue. I had some nitpicks, but overall, I thought it was good. I like the artwork a lot, and I can't wait to see what Absolute Carnage brings us. So let me know what your thoughts are down below, and we'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.